I want to make a video about should you get a German Shepherd and that's very important a lot of people get them because they think they look cool preppers get them because they have no idea what they're used for and a lot of people get them because they're morons but if you understand what breed you're getting and why then that's a good thing. You have to understand that German Shepherds are basically bred to protect. You do not have to train them for this. Oh, lay down. You do not have to train them for this at all. They are designed and bred for protection. If they're in your house walking around at night and somebody tries to break in, and they're also vocal, <laughs> that person will end up dead. But let me give you some facts. 4.5 million people are bitten by dogs each year in the United States. That's more than 800,000 receive medical attention for dog bites, according to the U.S. Centers for, De for Disease Control. At least half of those bitten are children. 400,000 kids are bitten by dogs, not just German Shepherds. The highest biting rate is pit bulls. And the type of dog breeds that bite humans are Rottweilers and German Shepherds and pit bulls, those three. So you have to understand that. Now for fun, how many people are bit by cats? <laughs> Actually, there's 400,000 people that get cat bites every year. And an estimated 66,000 have to actually go to the hospital to emergency each year due to cat bites. I'll tell you a story, if you stick around long enough, about a cat attack. But let's understand something about German Shepherds. They are bred to protect. They can go from 0 to 90 in a second. Think about that. This German Shepherd has to be kept under control at all times. You have to have control of your dog. Now, you'll see a lot of preppers that will have a German Shepherd running around behind them in their videos. Think about that for a minute. Does that really seem... Like an intelligent person that knows about the breed. When we got 4.5 million people that are being bit by dogs every year. How are they going to be in control of that dog. If that German Shepherd is running behind them. So we would have to say. That anybody that has done that. Is basically a complete moron and a stupid person. If you were to check any of my videos when I go camping, you will see a leash on my German Shepherd at all times. My German Shepherds are under control every single video. You will not see my German Shepherds running loose or walking beside me when I'm carrying my backpack. You will not see that. Because I know they can go from 0 to 90. A perfect example of this is I was out camping in my hammock system. And behind me was a hill. I figured that was a good place to set up my hammock because, you know, nobody's going to come up and sneak up behind me there. I could see everything out the other side. My German Shepherd, Luna, she's a female, she's now seven years old, was connected to the tree with a six-foot leash. I don't give my dogs a lot of, you know, rain. They don't have no 100-foot leashes where they can get a run. The problem with 100-foot leashes... If that dog takes off on full speed doing 30, 40 miles an hour and it, it can choke itself or, or hurt its neck. But I thought, you know, my dog's pretty good. He's under control. There's nobody around. They're quite a ways away. I have nothing to worry about. I mean, my dog, she's well trained. I don't have to worry, you know. Well, how often have you heard that? Well, she went from 0 to 90, and she took off, and she had this deep voice, and I was like, whoa, where'd that come from? 
and um, I jumped out of the hammock only to see a seven, eight-year-old boy running up that hill like Flash Gordon as fast as he can go. Had my dog not been under control, he would have kept going. I mean, she would have kept going. She, she would have nailed that kid. And uh, that would have been a very upsetting day. And then they would have put down my dog. And it's just not worth having a Jeremy Shepherd running behind you in your videos to look cool because you want to look cool on a video. If you see people doing that, please tell them to get their dog under control. Even if you piss them off. Because they're not educated enough to understand that that dog is bred to protect. It is bred to attack and guard. There was another time when I tried to desensitize my German Shepherds, and I have two of them now. Um, I'll take them to Lowe's. I'll take them to Tractor Supply. I take them to stores. I take them to events. And this is all good because you'll hear people saying that, you know, get your dog out, socialize them, everything else. I don't care how much you socialize your dog. I don't care how much you believe that dog won't hurt anybody. Again, I come back to German Shepherds are bred to guard, period. And when they get it in their head to go from zero to 90, unless you got those dogs under control, there ain't nothing you're going to do. And somebody's going to get become a, a statistics of those 4.5 million people that are bitten in the USA. Now... It really irks me how people don't understand German Shepherds. Now, if you're going to get a German Shepherd, get a female. If it's your first one. They squat. They don't piss all over everything. Um, they're quicker to learn. And they're not as outgoing. And I mean like they're on crack. My female Luna, and it's funny, I have a video of her wearing goggles. And I ended up with a lot of people saying like, how did you train her to do that? I didn't. I put the goggles on. I took them out of the box. And she just sat there letting me do whatever I wanted. And then we went for a walk. My female Luna wants to please me. And when I do something with her, she trusts me explicitly. And I can do anything I want to her. There was no training involved. To get her to sit took five minutes. To get her to stay took a minute. I mean, she is unbelievably smart when it comes time to train her. Um, I cut her nails with a Dremel. I've made multiple videos on that. Um, she's an amazing dog. And uh, I, I can't say enough good things about her. Now, I recently acquired a male German Shepherd. He may have some uh, something else mixed in him. I'm not quite sure. He had a clothesline around his neck. And it was all cut, you know. Extremely skinny, ribs were protruding, backbone was protruding. But this dog had energy. It was unbelievable. You can hear him. He's very vocal. And he is just amazing. The first thing I do with a German Shepherd is I crate train him. So every night I go to bed, that dog goes in a crate. And he will cry and cry. It's been a week now and he's still crying. His ribs are starting to fill out now. His backbone's starting to fill out now. I have to spend a minimum two hours a day with him. We have to run. We have, the things I have to do is unbelievable. He is um, a wrecking ball in a china shop. He is clumsy. Um, he's sneaky. I could have a piece of paper on this desk, okay? And he'll literally walk by that two, three, four times, and he'll look at me to see if I'm looking at him. And then out of the blue, he'll just grab it and keep going, and he'll go behind my computer chair. And I'm like, oh, you bugger. He's actually dug a hole in the wall behind my computer chair. Now, he's going into concrete. He's not going to go anywhere, but I'm going to have to fix that now. Um, he's wrecked two or three cables I've had to replace. That cost me $45. The dog is unbelievable. Male German Shepherds are completely different than females. Sooner or later, he's going to cock his leg. And I'm going to have to train that out of him. Now, with a female, you get them fixed. A lot of people will say, well, get your male German Shepherd fixed, and that'll take that out of them. Not necessarily. You should not fix a male German Shepherd for two years, 18 months. Because every time 
they get active. They're actually generating hormones, which is creating vitamins for their hips, believe it or not. Look it up on Google. Another thing I do, do I have that? Every morning, both my German Shepherds will get one of these, okay? And these are just loaded with vitamins. I'll have a link to this. You can go check it out. Every morning they get one of those. So now we have 30 bucks in vitamins. Um, we have dog food. They love blueberries. Um, usually twice a week they get a special plate of chicken gizzards, um, chicken hearts. I mean, they get a real special plate. All you can do for German Shepherd is try to make sure they've got enough vitamins so they don't start getting hip displacement and other things that happen to them. And they die earlier than most dogs. You, if you get a German Shepherd to live past 12 years, you're doing good. And because of the amount of training they take, you just get extremely close to them. And that's all there is to it. My dogs do not sleep in bed with me whatsoever. There are boundaries. And there are times they can sleep with me. Like Luna, when we go camping, she will turn around and sleep with me in my tent. She still has a leash on her. It is still around my arm. If she goes through that tent, she could be going after a raccoon as far as I know. Cosmo, it's enough. But she'll take me with her. And she is never out of my control. Neither dog is. I take out Cosmo the male, the puppy. I think he's about five or six months old. We go out and he gets leash trained. He's yanking. I mean, <laughs> he requires a lot of patience. But I did find something. Let me show you. This. And this happened today by accident, okay? Take a look at this croc. Look at, look at those teeth marks, okay? Cosmo got a hold of this crack. And I didn't notice. He has toys. But no, he decided he wanted this toy. Well, you know, I picked it up. I gave him a smack in the butt. I didn't even hit him hard. He thought it was the end of the world. He ran it behind my chair. And as long as I was holding that crack, he wouldn't come out. And I was looking at it and I was like, are you kidding me? This is your kryptonite? Really? Dogs are like kids. Every kid has a punishment they can't stand some kids hate to read some and it's it's funny don't make your kid read to punish them but it's an example there is an achilles heel with dog dogs each have their own personality so i have the choice now if i want to carry a crock with me and say sit and tap him on the button he'll probably listen instantly or if he starts jumping all over me i probably just have to lift it and he'll say oh I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet, but we'll see. Now, if you're going to get a German Shepherd, I would say get a female before you get a, a male is four times the amount of work. Now, at the same time, I'm a computer programmer. I work from home. My dogs see me all the time. If I leave for three or four hours, they get caged. They are not in that cage any longer than that. You know, you can't put a German Shepherd into a cage and leave him there for 12 hours while you finally come home. I mean, that's just too long. You know, some people tie them outside for a little while when they're gone. You have to be the judge of what type of dog owner you want to be. But my dogs have limitations. They are kept inside all the time, unless they're going to the bathroom. Um, they do not get put on chains and connected to fences or trees or anything like that. The only time they're connected to a tree if they're right beside me and we're camping. You know, and I'm busy doing something and I can't pay the amount of attention I need to that dog at that moment. German Shepherds take a lot of work. So do Rottweilers. So do um, Pit Bulls. I mean, these are all biting dogs. And if you believe for one sec, oh, my dog is so lovable, he wouldn't hurt a fly. And then all of a sudden he goes from zero to 90. Some kid's face is totally marked up and now needs some plastic surgery. And now your dog's going to be put under. 
because of your irresponsibility of not having your dog under control. These are big dogs. Do not get them if you don't have time to spend with them. Do not get them if you can't afford to go pay a trainer, if you don't want to do it. Do not get them. Whoever got this male dog had him tied to a tree with clothesline around its neck, starving it, probably didn't want to do it on purpose. They probably brought out a bowl of food once a day and they didn't want to go out because it was cold. But they couldn't even buy a proper leash. The guy was just like, oh, I felt so bad for, for this male dog. So now his ribs are starting to fill out. His back is starting to fill out. He's getting a lot better. He's calming down. Cosmo. And, but he's still a puppy. You know, he's still voicing his opinion. And normally when a dog cries, they want to go to the bathroom or they want to go do something. Not him. He wants to be beside me all the time. If I'm in the other room sleeping, he will cry because he wants to be out there. He wants to see me. And that's the way Jeremy Shepherds are. I don't allow them to sleep in bed with me. I have two Pomeranians that are in the other room. They do not associate with my German Shepherds. I mean, they'll play around a little bit over by the gate. And, they'll, you know, they'll jump around and play keep away with the ball and stuff like that. But there is no way I will let my Pomeranians hang out with my German Shepherds. My German Shepherds could take one paw, put it on top of that Pomeranian, and break his back right in two. And the German Shepherd would think, well, he's just playing. And why is he so fragile? And that's the thing. Some German Shepherds will mouth you where they'll start mouthing your arm. And again, you can't allow that. You have to be a leader. You can't be a wuss. You know, you have to be ready to confront people. When somebody turns around and says, oh, that's such a pretty dog. Do you mind if I, I pet that dog? Immediately say, no, please don't pet my dog. It's under training. Do not be afraid of hurting their feelings. If your dog bites them, you will get sued. It's not worth saying, yes, please pet my dog. You have no idea who that person is. You do not know that person. I take my dogs when there's big events going on in my small town. I walk down the street. I take them to the vet, even when he doesn't have an appointment. The vet will come on. Oh, how you doing, Cosmo? You're not like, that's just so he's not scared of the vet. You know, so he's excited. The vet comes out, gives him a cookie, and then we leave. Nothing was done. There was nothing done to that dog. It's all about desensitizing. Nothing more. What I find really funny is when I walked down the street with Luna, before I got Cosmo, the uh, sidewalk would part, literally. That, Luna walked right beside me. Now, one time, I took him to Lowe's. I normally take him to Tractor Supply or some other places, but I took him to Lowe's once. And we were looking for uh, a fridge then. And I'm walking around, and, you know, Luna's walking right beside me. People are looking at him saying, and I heard people saying, you know, what a good dog. Oh, that's a well-trained dog. What was interesting, which I never knew she had in her, I would stop. She would literally walk in a circle around me. She would back up and sit her butt right between my legs. I'd look down, and there she was. I'd be like, well, what the hell did you learn that now? She didn't learn that. That is bred in her. That is protection mode. I had no clue. Anywhere I walked in Lowe's, that's what she did when I stopped. She sat between my legs. People were looking at her. I mean, they were amazed. And they thought it was some amazing training I did. It's just bred in them. If you're thinking about getting a German Shepherd, please keep them on a leash at all times, even when you're camping anywhere. You know, if you're going to let them run full out, make sure you're in an area that they can't get out of. And make sure there's nobody around that can actually get to them, if they so choose. So, uh, oh, I told you I'd tell you a cat story. This is a true story. This happened to my mother when she was alive. They had this cat they were taking care of in the garage. She was feeding it every day, giving it water. My dad loved that cat. He'd work on his truck or something. That cat would be laying on top of his chest when he worked on, on, on that truck. He, nobody thought this cat would do this. The one day, for some reason nobody knows, that cat went ballistic. It went right up my mother's legs and literally tore a hole in her leg 
almost two feet long and opened her right up. She had to be rushed to the hospital in an ambulance. They had to stitch her up. I mean, that cat went crazy. They brought in a farm vet to put that cat down. It didn't make any sense. My father, it didn't make any sense. What my dad didn't make any sense. What my mother, they don't know why that cat did what it did. Animals are unpredictable. And so are little tiny cute cats. And they can hurt you if they choose to. And you have to keep your eyes open. Now, Cosmo, he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He really doesn't. At least he hasn't shown it to me. You know, I pick up his food. I play with his food. Um, I do all kinds of stuff with him. He's never, ever raised his lip to me. He's never tried to bite me. Nothing. So, will Cosmo bite somebody someday? No. Because I have him under control at all times. And anytime you see a prepper with some German Shepherd or a pit bull or a Rottweiler running around behind them, not on a leash, they're not a very bright person. So keep that in mind. If you're going to get a bigger dog, keep them under control at all times. Do not guess for a second that they're the lovey, lovey teddy bear. German Shepherds are bred for protection. It is in their brain. Some animals are bred to be cuddly. Some animals are bred to be put dresses on. Not a German Shepherd. Nice thing about a German Shepherd, they don't require a lot of maintenance. You need to cut their nails down, um, you know, a nice flea collar on them and stuff like that. There really isn't a lot. I give Luna a bath usually once every three months, once every six months, depending on how she looks. And when I get my bath, I take them to Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply costs me 10 bucks for my dog, and they have everything. All the shampoo, all the brushes, everything. I just walk them in. They say, how you doing? I say, I'm here to wash the dog. Okay. And it's usually in the back. Not all Tractor Supplies, but most. And, you know, I'm in there for an hour just giving her a wicked bath. And they provide all the shampoo and everything. When I'm done, they have dryers. I dry her up, and I come out and pay my 10 bucks. She's good for another three to six months. You have to be willing to take care of your animal. And I'm telling you, it's work. It's not easy. And it's not cheap. Between these two dogs here, they run me about $100 a month in uh, dog food. And we're talking big bags. And uh, the collars they wear are very expensive flea collars. I mean, they run me about $65, $70, but they say they're good for eight months, but they're more good for six months. You know, just these two dogs alone, I'm into a $150 flea collar. And then they have their own collars. They have their own chests, their vests, um, their own leashes. You know, both dogs are different sizes. Cosmo right now is very skinny. He only has a 16-inch neck. When well, you go over to Luna, oh, boy, she got a big neck. Yeah, so they cost money. You know, you end up into a monthly bill. And now if they destroy things around your house, well, that gets real expensive real quick. But I would really stress that you crate train them because, like, you know, Cosmo, for example, he does get on my nerves. Oh, he'll jump all over me. He'll turn quick, hit me in the kneecaps with his ass. I mean, he just goes crazy. And when he finally gets to the point where he's ready to peek me, I'm like, oh, no, you got to go in that cage. That's it. Enough. You know, and I say cage and he runs to the cage. So he's getting there. And I need a break because he's going crazy. Now, I'll leave him in there for an hour and then it's time to bring him back out again when I get my patients back. You have to have the time to do that. If you're working a job and you're gone for 8 to 12 hours a day, you really should not get a German Shepherd. You know, I work from home. I have a lot of time. I can do that. But um, you really should think about these big dogs and what they need. They want to work. You can't just leave them sit around and lay around the living room floor. No, you can't do that. You know, I got to take these dogs out every day and they got to go. I have a fenced in front yard. Um, they run. I think they could maybe clear the fence, but they don't. Not yet. They are desensitized around cats because if you've seen my other videos, you know, I let them go in the front yard. The cats just kind of look at them like, oh, these guys are back again. And then the cats will leave. They'll jump the fence and leave. And then once the dogs come back in, they're like, 
All right, the assholes are gone back in the door. <laughs> you know. But please understand, 4.5 million pe people are bitten by dogs every year, and 800,000 receive medical, ten medical attention, and that is from those three breeds, the Rottweiler, the Pitbull, and the German Shepherd. So if you ever see anybody in a video with a German Shepherd running around in the bush like he belongs there, that guy's a moron. He's going to get that dog killed, and it's not the dog's fault. So please understand it. Right in their comment section saying, look, that dog needs to be, you know, controlled. Please put that dog on a leash. Even when I go to Land Between the Lakes or some state parks, or these, they got signs up front that say all dogs on leashes. I can't just let Luna walk down the trail all free and willy. She needs to be on a leash all the time. Because they know that these three breeds can hurt people. They're wonderful breeds to have. I mean, with me having two of these now, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, they're better than a gun. Way better. With a gun, I could miss. They don't miss. If they don't know who you are, you will see that they won't bark. Both their heads go sideways. And then they go this way. You know, Cosmo's pure black. He'll sit in the corner where it's black watching you, waiting for you to come in. Come on. Time to eat you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And when they go from zero to 90, they don't miss. It's pretty much a done deal. They are guard dogs, and they will protect you. They will protect your family. If you got kids, they'll protect those kids become their protection. But if they don't know those kids, then they become dangerous. There's hot and cold. That's it. There's no, my dog will never hurt a flea. Don't ever think that. If you've got a German Shepherd, a Wild or a Pit Bull, they can go off any time. And if they do hurt somebody or scar a kid for life, then, of course, you're going to get sued, and then the dog's going to be put down. Is it really worth it? I mean, is it that much trouble to put a proper collar and a vest on a dog when you go outside and walk them? Is it really that hard? You know, because my dogs are always on a leash when I leave the public, when I go in the public. So if you're considering a Jeremy Shepherd, really think about what you're doing. And if you got questions, let me know. I pretty much dealt with all of it. I mean, when it comes to the Jeremy Shepherds, my dogs are very happy, very well taken care of. And uh, it's not for somebody, like I said, somebody that's soft or thinks they're going to be a cuddly. You know, the same thing actually applies to horses. You can't think a horse is something that's cuddly and start petting it like it's a pet dog. Or that horse will reach around and take a chunk out of you. I used to break horses when I was younger. But um, they're not that cuddly little Pomeranian like a lot of people think. When an animal has the power to hurt somebody, you have to be the leader of the pack, and you better be really willing to stand your ground. My dogs will never hurt somebody. Never. And that's the way you have to be in your mind if you're going to get a German Shepherd, a Wattweiler, or a Pitbull. I mean, these numbers are ridiculous. 4.5 million people. Does that tell you how many irresponsible dog people are out there? It's almost like, oh, you want to buy a German Shepherd? Oh, you need to go take that class down there for six hours. That'll cost you $300. And people say, well, that's a money grab. If it cut that number in half, it'd be worth it. Or people say, oh, I'm not going to spend that. That's getting ridiculous and too much money. Well, then you don't deserve that dog. Because it's going to cost you a lot more after it's at a puppy stage. I'll tell you that right now. They're not cheap. But the rewards you get in full in the end is just amazing how they make you feel. But you have to put the time in. Keep your dogs leashed up, especially if they're big dogs. Let other people know when you see them loose. And don't let some kid get hurt because of your dog. Make sure he's trained. I'll catch you on the next one.